okay, cool. All righty. So, firstly, thanks everyone for coming. Um, my name is Alexandra Settle. Alex Settle, please. Uh, some of you may know me. Major. <laughs> you can find me on IRC as A Settle, or you can also find me on um, Twitter as Tuesday. I work for Rackspace. I currently actually work in the OSIC um, Center, so the OpenStack Innovation Center, which is a partnership with Intel. I also work on the Rackspace Private Cloud documentation, uh, work upstream on OpenStack Ansible and OpenStack manuals. Okie dokie, let's get started. So firstly, can we just have a like, raise of hands here firstly, who understands the home and away joke? Okay, so like basically the British and the Australians. <laughs> so just a little clarification for maybe those that are kind of like, should this be funny? Home and Away is a really popular soapy in Australia. It's like your 7 p.m. watching time. Um, and I did this talk in Australia and obviously this title was like, oh my gosh, hilarious. But here it's slightly less computing. So just a little bit of background on that one. Okay, sorry, I've missed a slide already. So this is for <laughs> my colleague Darren. He is a big fan. Okay, so a um, little bit of clarity. I've worked from home for I worked from home, I should say, for two and a half years with the Rackspace um, cloud builders, and basically only recently moved to start working in an office in the UK. Just to give you a bit of clarity of why I'm here and why I'm talking about why why I feel like I can talk about this kind of thing. Um, so to give you an idea of the size of Australia, this is basically Europe inside. As you can see, Spain takes up about uh, like a quarter of Western Australia, and that section in particular is where no one lives. So, on this map, when we were working from home, we lived in these six different cities between 15 of us, and we each had a different time zone. So, as you can see on this map, actually, I have a pointer. Oh, no. That's not going to work. Oh, no, it's giving me the mouse. Okay, so I'll just mouse it. So, basically, like in the mid, there's a half hour difference. On each side, there's another time zone difference, too. So, we all had to communicate continuously. We are all working in a totally different time zone when our main office, head office, was in San Antonio, Texas. That included with a bunch of developers who were also in the UK. So we were fairly spread out, and that's not to include our, um, not to disinclude, sorry, our European rackers as well. So we're stretched over a large portion of people. And basically what ended up happening was like my calendar was the busiest from 3 a.m., which is not really a very like good time zone to talk to anyone. So that became quite difficult. So as a result, our team did our best, and we rallied together to basically form our sort of super team. Um, my credit kind of goes to my boss, which is basically the woman sitting in the second row who had purple hair. She basically drove this sense of culture between us, formed like groups, IRC groups, made sure we communicated, and we had our own culture outside of what was Rackspace. That is not to say we didn't have Rackspace culture, but we derived culture from there, and we grew, and we built something that was our own. So we were able to work together throughout our different time zones. And, like, and you know what? We still managed to communicate with our American UK colleagues, building our own culture and having our own team forward a front. And we said, hey, this is who we are. Don't ignore us. And that was super important for our entire like, uh, functioning for the last couple of years. The whole team is still there, minus myself now. And you know what? This was really great, but this took a lot of time and effort. And people talk a lot about working from home and how like, you, know, you need to communicate, you need to make sure you do face-to-face, -face, but no one really talks about what's really important is creating a good culture and a good team and making sure that those communication channels are actually effective. So either you're here because you thought the title was funny, you're in my fan club, or you read my abstract. So basically, in 2016, Teams workflow and work is highly distributed. It's safe to say that most people in this room work from home, manage work from home, or are, manage, uh, sorry, are in a team with work from home employees. Can I get a raise of hands of who works from home? Cool, so who manages a team with work from home employees? One. <laughs> and does anyone work in teams with someone, with other people that work from home and you struggle communicating? Yeah, cool. So it's pretty much like everyone in this room, right? So we've all had experience with those that work from home, working from home, what the difference is. So basically, I will be going through these, hopefully, in the next 40 minutes. Hopefully not too quickly. If I am talking too quickly, please tell me to slow down. I do tend to do that. Um, so firstly, we were just looking at considerations to make when you're working from, with working with colleagues that work from home. Um, especially when you work in an office, because a lot of the time it's really easy to be surrounded by your people and forget about the fact that you have a whole other subset of people that are super important to you. Maintaining good team culture when you're working in a remote team, incredibly important. Sometimes you feel like you're a silo. Like, let's work through that, make sure you can have a good team culture. How to work from home efficiently and effectively. Um, when I was researching this talk, it came up pretty quickly that lots of people have done these kind of talks. And I don't really want to reinvent the world. I want to talk about what cool things you guys can do too on top of some advice you've already been receiving. 
and basically how to maintain effective online communication between teams. Okay, so this is pretty self-explanatory. Over the last 10 years in the US alone, the numbers of those working from home has increased 103% since 2005. These stats are incredibly hard to find. This is the best one I could find because basically people aren't measuring this anymore. No one is saying, oh my gosh, we have work from home employees. This is amazing. This is really special. Instead, they're saying, no, we just have employees. This is the norm. This is, this is the day to day. So basically, like originally, let's say 2005, Working from home meant that you were a special employee. You meant maybe you couldn't commute in, maybe it was something different. And like the whole thing is, is like maybe your colleagues were jealous, functioning between teams was really hard because communication, communication channels were less and less. But fortunately, things are getting better. Um, the internet, as we all are here for, uh, enables us to communicate pretty much 24 seven. Um, when you have those relationships with colleagues on a multiple platforms, um, but this isn't the problem. Like the problem isn't whether or not you can communicate with people. Uh, when you're working from home, you're not short on platforms and tools to communicate. Over the last few years, just been researching on how best to do this, and everyone was giving good advice as I was talking about. So just going to run across a couple of quick pieces of advice people have given, and maybe some of you identify them. Maybe you have a better advice, and if you do, please stand up. I'd be really interested in having a bit of like you know conversation here because this isn't just about me saying, oh my gosh, this is the best way to work from home. Because quite frankly. If you are working from home or have worked from home, we're all experts in this area. So basically, figure out how to best juggle time zones. Uh, I don't know if anyone has heard of this app. It's called Figure, the, Figure It Out. It's a plugin to go in your Chrome browser. Basically, you just select which time zones you need to be aware of. And every time you open a new tab, instead of opening to a blank page, it opens up with your selections of time zones. So you're constantly aware of what, what times people are working in, especially when you're working across the globe. So this was one good piece of advice I saw. Communication tools. Basically, like, make sure that you have something, uh, Slack, IRC, Skype, all the above. If anyone has any other interesting tools, please feel free to stand up. Um, best to hold meetings, face to face, of course. I mean, it's really hard to communicate with someone when you can't see what they're thinking, what they're feeling. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that later about how important it is to read body language so you can understand like, more of this. I'll go into a bit more facts later. Let's just keep going. Form relationships. Try and strike up personal conversations with your colleagues. I know that's really hard for some people who don't necessarily want to reach out. Like, I don't, like, I've heard a lot of people say, but I don't care about my colleagues, or like, I don't care, I'm just here to work. Well, the whole thing is, is you can't manage a good team, you can't be a good team unless you have relationships. So keep these things in mind and we'll go into them in depth a little bit further. So basically, one of the things I noticed when we're walking through best practices of working from home um, which is, if you're new to the game, is really great because that way you get an insight into a couple of quick things to start off with. Um, but what people are talking about, uh, what people aren't talking about, how it impacts your life as well. Working from home can often be really lonely, isolating, um, and a lot of people really like that, and that's fine. But that doesn't take away from the fact that people need other people, and you need other people to work in a team, and you need other people to manage, and you need people to report to. That's how structures work. So you can't keep pulling back each time and saying, hey, I'm a silo, I like working alone, because it doesn't really work that way, especially with the bigger picture. So, and the good thing about working from home, on the flip side, is it gives you a freedom of flexible working hours, freedom of movement, and an enviable work-life balance. I know perfectly well when I first started working from home, my parents were just like, how could you possibly manage that? Like, how do they know when you're working? And it was just like, well, I, I, I say hi in the morning, like, it's not that hard. And it took a little while to like, get them around to the idea that working from home is actually no different to the office. You still say hi to your colleagues. You have breakfast with your colleagues, except they can't see you eating and making a mess of yourself, which is one plus, basically. But a lot of the time, people are talking about how to be, better from your work, how to be a better work from home colleague, um, not how to be the best distributed team. So one of the things I've realized after working from home for this period of time and having a highly distributed team internationally was that everyone works from home differently. Considerations to make when, work, when working with work from home colleagues. There's a lot of works in that sentence and it gets a bit tongue twisty after a while. So basically, as a manager, this is a personal, like this is advice that I have received from managers and this is something that if I as a co if my manager asked me what could they do better for me, this is something I would deliver to them. Basically, ensure your employees' voices are heard. When they, like, people struggle when they are under, like muffled under layers of management. And one of the things about working from home is that a lot of the time you are the last person to find out information. Because maybe you're in the wrong time zone, maybe you were 
running to the post office because you actually do have those flexible working hours. You're not there when sometimes those major conversations are made online. A lot of the time, what will happen is these conversations just run through IRC, for example. And before you know it, you've changed, your, like, you've changed the direction for the afternoon. Make sure, as a manager, you are reaching out to your work, like your work from home employee each time and saying, hey, are you caught up? Is this something like, are you, do you understand what's going on? Make those face-to-face -face contacts and ensure it's happening because otherwise, a lot of the, like, as I said, you just get muffled. And one of the best things is communicating upper management ch like, um, changes enables your, like, it, it gets a trust bond. And once you have that trust bond, there's a level of freedom and like, independence and your employees can grow from there. So basically, whoo, sorry, I've lost my train of thought naturally. Um, where are we? As a work from home employee. So basically, reach out to your team lead. It's the same thing. This whole thing is about being in a team, making sure you're going both ways each time. So there's three parts to work from home teams, which is basically your manager, your work from home employee, and those that work in the team that are in the office. All of you have to reach out. So as I say, reach out to your team lead or senior manager, whoever would be most applicable, and catch up once a week or less, depending what's best for you. Like, Get out there and make sure it's your, as much your responsibility as it is your manager's to communicate and make sure it's all happening. And the same as being an office employee. Take five seconds out of your day to ping your colleague and say, hey man, did you catch that? Is that something you're aware of? Because a lot of the time people are just, there's a lot of miscommunication. And I was in a talk for OzCon last week and it was on conflict. Basically, um, she very well pointed out that most conflicts happen because there is a gap in information. And that gap in information just gets wider and wider as people are less inclined to talk to each other because what they're doing is they're just fighting over more or less the same thing. So to avoid simple things like conflict, reach out, make sure everyone's up to date, make these small considerations out of your day to just make the team run a little smoother. Maintaining good team culture in a remote team. So basically, as a manager, reach out and include your employees' activities. I don't know if everyone has like a fun budgety type thing, but Rackspace has a fun budget. Once a quarter, we get a set amount of money for your team to go do a thing, which is awesome. This isn't always applicable for everyone, but this is just an example of what we have. So when I was working from home, we struggled with this at first. There was that whole distance, hey, like you live in Canberra, Sydney, Melbourne, Tasmania, which is like the middle of nowhere, and Brisbane, like how are you all going to connect and communicate? And it started because one day, we ended up calling it the great pizza coup of 2014. Um, basically, we found out the Sydney office was getting free pizza. And we were like, what? Why don't we get free pizza? And so my colleague and I decided we were gonna order pizza to everyone's houses. But naturally, it just doesn't work. So after lots of brainstorming, managers came back and they said, hey, cool, we love the idea that you guys wanna do something, but let's just like not order pizza, hey. So here is movie vouchers. <laughs> so they sent out movie vouchers to everyone and they said, hey, look, if you're remote and on your own, take yourself and maybe your partner or perhaps even your kids or just yourself or a friend, go to the movies. If your team is all together and you'd like to go to the movies together, do that. It was a fun way to engage social activity without necessarily putting pressure on having to like, get all this budget to meet up. It meant that there was still that heavy emphasis on that work is not the only important thing in life. And that was amazing. So basically, even if like, this scenario can't work out, when you're planning these kind of events and you're saying, hey, we're doing the Christmas party, but the person can't come, just reach out to them and ensure that person is, like, realizes they're a valued member of the team. Like, that's all people really need to feel. They don't need to just, like, if you make your work from home employee or colleague feel isolated, they will act isolated. And they won't come in and join the team and there will be a lack of cohesion. So basically, and then the same point rolls down. As a work from home employee, get involved. Don't sit back and say, like, oh, gosh, I'm too far away. I'm an hour or two away from the office. Contact your employer and say, hey, is there a chance that maybe I can come in once a quarter? Is there a way this can work? Can we potentially meet up at the conference? Plan something in advance. Stop pretending that these things just happen out of thin air. You go get it as well. And same thing as an office employee. If you're organizing something, include your colleagues. Just because they're away doesn't mean they can't come. You never know, right? Like, you can't say no when you don't know. Continuing on. So basically, like, a successful company culture leads to successful, like, business. And like, that, a, uh, that requires a, a revolving culture. An evolving culture is incredibly important. You need to keep up with the times. You need to make sure that your like, employees are happy. Working from home efficiently and effectively. This is a slightly harder one because, as I said, everyone works from home differently. So 
Uh, reiterating what I said again, sometimes working from home can be a really lonely and isolating thing. You are by yourself, you're a silo, and sometimes you just don't know how to reach out to people because there's not a like uh, consistent communication platform. So what do you do? You have to find a way that work, so that work does not impact your mental health. Um, so like full disclosure, basically, when I first started working at Rackspace, my six, first six months was fine. I was like, I'm doing cool, whatever. And then basically the next year after that was just this massive crash. Um, I like shut myself in my office. I worked stupid hours because I could. I suddenly developed an incredibly bad relationship with BuzzFeed, which actually hasn't ended, but that's okay. But the thing is, is you ha I had to break myself out of that. So I like went looking, you know, how can I make this easier? How can I make this better? I'm, I'm not okay, I'm not myself, I'm, I'm quiet, I'm shut down. I don't reach out to people to go hang out. What, what can I do to make this better? So I found myself a, um, a co-working space. It was this beautiful, beautiful house that had been renovated by some architects after the Brisbane 2010-11 floods. And it had this amazing open plan space, a pool at the back. And I, was, I spoke to Rackspace and they were quite happy to fund that for me for a few months while I just got myself back together. I didn't have to go in every day. I went in once or twice a week, paid as I went. And quite frankly, it was really good because I got to meet other creatives and other techs and reach out and talk to them about what they were doing. And it didn't matter so much that they were my immediate colleagues. It just mattered that I had someone to go to and say, oh, gosh, I have this problem. And they'd be like, I can't help you. And I'd be like, that's OK. <laughs> and that's all that mattered, you know? Like it was just someone that you could go to and have lunch with. That was awesome. Another one, good one was basically like each day, my bedroom would be here, my office would be here. So instead of just like trawling my blanket out to my bedroom as I had been for the last year, basically got up, walked around the block twice, and then went back in as if I would be walking to work. The commute may seem like a pain in the butt, but you've just got to have that mental like understanding that there is, that's the bedroom, that's the office. And you have to separate that. And there's an amazing amount of people who I talk to, and they're like, oh, I just work from home in my pajamas all the time. And like, I get that. It's really comfortable. Why wouldn't you? But you have to have that separation. It just doesn't work that. Like, it can't work that way long term. And I know a lot of people feel like it can, but eventually you're going to have to break that cycle. Um, so another one is agree on the communication tools your team uses. This is a really hard one because everyone seems to feel like one communication tool is better than the other. I have heard the Slack IRC arguments so many times. But you know what? Put that aside. It's not about what's better, who, what has Giphy, what can be plugged into what, what, like, it doesn't matter, okay? Like, if you guys are working from home, you need to find a way that's consistent and clear. If you have several communication tools, like, we use IRC for communication channels for dev, we have Slack for internal stuff, we will use um, Skype for video conferencing, we'll use Hangouts for big group chats. That's great, but make sure it's consistent. Don't jump across the board, because your colleagues need to like, know where they can go to speak to you, what they can do, how they can get their best and easiest. That's super important. Just make sure that like, when you're discussing this with people, you do that straight up. Be consistent is basically my top like, middle like, um, uh, overarching thing there. Um, and ensure your colleagues know how to contact you, which basically comes back to agree on the communication tools. Just make sure that they know where you are, what you're doing. I mean, the amount of people I know that don't even say hello in the morning, like, I don't care if you're in a grump, guys. Like, I need to know that you're online so I can contact you when necessary. But this is a little different, I suppose, because a lot of us are here for OpenStack, and like, OpenStack channels, I mean, they're not your work colleagues. You don't need to jump in and be like, hey, guys, I'm here. But when you are working from home and you have those communication channels as your main form of communication, then yeah, you need to let people know you're there. And people need to know that when they need you, they don't have to run around in circles trying to find your email. Make it easy. I mean, a lot of people are, as I said before, quite happy to sit alone and say, hey, I, like, all I want to do is be by myself and work by myself. It's easy to work by myself. I do a better job by me. But you're in a team, and this is not about you. This is about the bigger project. And you need to think about each time that you are hired or asked to do something, there is an umbrella project that you're in. And you need to focus on that. So stop focusing on the little things like what communication your channels are using or like oh i don't I, I don't want that person to bother me like you need to be a part of that team and think about what everything what everyone is doing what they're all working towards it's the same thing as you it just might be a slightly different way <laughs> maybe you can collaborate on that so there remember the goals of your top level project maintaining effective online communication between teams so this is where i come back to what i was talking about before 70 percent of communication is body language 23% is voice and tone and inflection, and 7% is your spoken words. So basically, 
how do you get your nonverbal message to match your verbal message? But how do you make sure this happens effectively online? So this is really hard because a lot of the time, I like the amount of times I have had people be like, oh my gosh, did you see so and so? They snapped at that person. And I'd be like, oh, I don't think they did. But neither of us actually knows. So how do you make sure that that stuff doesn't happen? Each time you want to express yourself, even positively, think about these top three things. How would you express your message? Does your message translate? And do you think someone could possibly take offense to it? A lot of people type super quick. And what they tend to do is with just what comes out of their brain, just goes straight into their fingers, and there isn't really a filter. And not everyone needs a filter. That's cool. I know I need a filter. Sometimes I will type the most ridiculous stuff ever. I have sworn in so many IRC channels. But that is not a good thing. <laughs> Basically, you need to take a step back and say, hey, wait a second. I'm trying to like congratulate this person, but would that potentially seem patronizing? OK, let's look at my verb. Like, let's look at my verbiage. OK, let's start this again. And like reading back to the like main problem, if you work from home, no one's ever going to see how you are. Like, if you're potentially occasionally work from home, maybe you work from home two or three days a week, at least you still have that human interaction with your colleagues. So they're sort of like, oh, OK, I understand what the person's like. I understand that maybe their intentions behind this message isn't as bad as I might think it is. But if no one ever sees how you are, oftentimes they can misunderstand you. So make sure you're taking this back, thinking about it, before you're really just going in there, OK? Because, you know, I do have a particular story about this one. Um, uh, only recently, I had a colleague that insisted that his other colleague learn to read. And you know what? That just wasn't OK. But the thing is, he didn't mean it that way. He actually just meant it as like a, you should learn to read, dude. But instead, the whole channel was like, oh my gosh, like, did you see him? He told him, how could he? That's so rude. That's not OK. That's just creating conflict. Like, think about before you say these things, perhaps even in jest, because sometimes it's just, it's not worth it. Alrighty. That is definitely it. That has been half an hour, so you can all go 10 minutes early. But is there any questions? Silence. OK. But uh, you mentioned you wouldn't normally say like the brain stuff in open stack channels. Mm. We do that all the time in the ironic channel. It's been an awesome experience. That is great. It super helps out new people that feel weird about being in IRC, right? Yeah, actually, that's a fantastic point. Like, one of the things, uh, I went to the Swift mid cycle at the beginning of this year. And there was actually this powwow session that went on until 3 o'clock in the morning because the Swift team couldn't work out why people weren't talking to them in IRC. Like they, they just blew their mind. Like, why won't people come and ask us questions? And I was with my colleague Andy here, and I pretty much just turned to him, and I was like, it's because no one seems friendly. And he was just like, well, how can you make it friendly? And I was like, well, instead of just running in with a question and demanding things and like chattering away as you normally would, why don't you just start off with a normal conversation? Hey, how's it going? Like, it, it just makes that barrier so much easier if you're constantly making it seem like this is a really techie channel and we, we're really serious, you're never going to get these new contributors coming in and being like, hey, this is awesome. Uh, what a cool environment. Yeah, so it's a really good point. Thanks. Yes? So, so one thing we do is uh, because people are usually, uh, they don't want to pollute the channel. Yeah. With uh, uh, social conversation, we have a separate channel for socializing. Yeah. Where everything goes, where you can. Yeah. No, that's on a really awesome idea. I don't know if everyone heard that, but basically, like, no one really wants to pollute the tech channel. So what this team does is they have a social channel on the side, and that's exactly what we tend to do at Rackspace as well. We have basically a pollution channel. We can talk about shit. Uh, pardon me, sorry. And then this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'd gotten I'd gotten half an hour in. I hadn't said anything bad. Um, and then we have a channel for just general talking. And I completely understand, because a lot of the time you want to go to a place where you feel like, hey, I can ask my questions. And there isn't someone being like, oh, did you see my cat? It did a dance. Like, you don't really need that in your channel all the time. So if you can separate that, awesome. But if you have a community where you understand each other and you feel like you can talk about those two things in the same channel, it's cool too. But that's a really good advice as well. Thank you. Yes? Well, if, if you have to be part of five different teams, there is a Slack, Slowdoc, Telegram, mm -hmm. WhatsApp. Mm. Ear, uh, whatever, and then there's a tech, tech channels on all of those, and then there's a, the cat yeah. channel. How do you concentrate properly? And yeah. You get all the valid information, like the money, mm. from the guy that has been uh, really awkward lately for you, and uh, 
Yeah. I, I think that, that, one that, that is a massive challenge. Uh, I'll yeah. Okay, so just to repeat that question. Basically, like, um, so uh, if you have like, five, like, you know, five different projects you're working on, and each channel has like a tech channel and a social channel within, you know, Slack, IOC, and many different platforms, how do you like um, funnel that information to make it easier? Is that right? I, yes. Okay. Cool. Just want to make sure I understood that properly. Um, that's really hard. I mean, I think I'm just going to reiterate what I said before. You have to make sure like you're consistent. If your project has uh, like uh, an ISC channel and a Slack channel. Might we maybe just sit down with the channel organization or maybe even the PTL and be like, hey, can we, for some reason, can we make this easier? I mean, to be honest with you, in my experience, as far as things have gone, I have always ended up just having to juggle the things, the many things, because people seem to always want to communicate in different ways. And I guess one of the things when you're working from home or if you're working remotely in any way, like you mostly are with OpenStack, you kind of just have to put in that little bit of extra effort to keep up. And I know that kind of is not the best answer, and that's not like kind of the answer you're looking for. There's no one like one solution fits all type thing. But if you can find like find sit down with your team and manage that and say, hey, this is not really like working for me. We are spread too far across. None of the information is coming in. Have that conversation. It's the best way you can do it, honestly. I apologize, I can't offer more than that, but that's probably my best solution, at least what I would do. Yes again. Yes. Like uh, when you get your morning coffee, you usually go to the social channel and everybody else is also there mm -hmm. in the morning or in the morning, like an hour later. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it depends, right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, like it tends to be like a daily routine where you switch between the different channels uh, during the day, depending on, uh, and everybody is doing the same thing at the same time. Yeah. So, like, Yeah. That's what's called that. That's a really good point as well. I should have brought this up earlier. If you are really genuinely interested in keeping up with every single channel and you go to bed, have an IRC bouncer or at least um, make sure your Slack is like set to a sleep so that you receive the messages when you turn back in again. That's a really good way to communicate between um, different time zones as well. Because a lot of people complain like, oh, I missed that message or I missed that memo. I didn't see the thing. Where was the update? I don't understand. And you get these constant complaints. And especially I recognize that from having lived in Australia, which is basically like nowhere on the map. And no one cares about the Australian time zone, let me tell you. So one of the best things was to have like a, a, like a server and a bouncer set up to make sure that each morning you came in, you could scroll back and say, okay, America is doing this, the UK is doing this, and I've just woken up, oh Jesus, <laughs> and go from there. So yeah, and like funnel it, and if you have to ignore a channel, like don't feel guilty for not catching up on someone's dog. Like it's not gonna happen. Focus on what's the important, which is like your job, the umbrella, making sure you're doing what you need to do, and if you need to talk to people, do that. But don't be afraid to say hello as well. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you're allowed to go dark if that's yeah. what you need to do to get work done. Yeah, absolutely. Turn everything off. You don't need to be online 24-7. And I mean, for some people, you do have to. That's OK. But manage your workloads. Make sure that you're at least saying, hey, I need some downtime. Have your ISC bouncer set up so that when you want to come back and you want to catch up, you can do that. So yeah. The important part to me is setting an expectation of availability. So like, yes. we'll be back in two hours. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Like, Yeah. People are used to me being in a particular time zone. It's important that people recognize when that yeah. changes. Like that's an important point as well going back is like make sure if you're managing a work from home team, manage your expectations accordingly to know that that employee often needs to like break and needs to like run their times down. They're not going to be working 24-7. I mean that's just it. And you yourself need to manage your own expectations. Just because you have a deadline and you don't have to leave the office at 6 when it closes, make sure that you're actually shutting down at some time. Like don't sit there all day and night. You're not going to like the more you run, you're not going to get any better. You will eventually run out. It's, you know, your, your brain only has a certain amount of power. Make sure you recharge it and you work at, like, you know, look after yourself, basically. Don't run yourself down like I did. I'm sure you've all probably run yourself down at some point. I'm probably preaching to the choir. Um, but yeah, make sure you guys are just looking after yourselves here. Hey. 
Yeah. I'm not a morning person. Knowing that, I mean, like, I, I wouldn't book a meeting with Alex at 7 a.m. because there's no chance she'd ever be there. No. But <laughs> consequently, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't book a late meeting. Like, I, I, people know not to look for me after about 3 p.m. in the afternoon because I start early. Yeah. So you, you've got to know what kinds of time zones you're, not just time zones, but working times that you start at as well. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Uh, Sorry, very popular today, aren't you? This is, uh, so, um, I noticed that often there is this thing where when you work from home and you get some interruptions during your work, mm. like you need to uh, set up your laundry or wash your dishes or whatever, mm. which is not work related. It's hard to shield from that. Yeah. And then you feel like you have to stay longer at yeah. because of that. I think a good point, sorry, just to like repeat that again, basically, like when you're working from home, you'll find yourself often like, you know, doing the dishes or the laundry, you know, and it's hard to shield yourself from that. Um, my counterpoint to that is, is basically you have to have a bit of self-control. I mean, would you do the dishes at work? Would you do your laundry at work? And I admit to being the first person when I'm working from home, I'm like, oh, sweet laundry day. But you can't keep doing that. Like, uh, you have to recognize that just because you're at home doesn't mean that work goes on the second shelf. You need to make sure that your workday is fulfilled. And if potentially, like, you, you're having a mind block, you just can't do it and you need to have that break, yeah, sure, if washing makes you happy, go do the washing. Um, but there's not many people I know that that's the case for. But honestly, make sure you have that break. I mean, I, I get it, it's hard to ignore, but you just, like, maybe write a schedule out for yourself. Make sure you schedule it down. Yeah, guys, eat lunch. <laughs> Yes, yeah, absolutely. Like yeah. Yes. Yeah, take breaks. Which is washing the dishes just isn't as fun. Like, oh, I love my lunch hour. Like, <laughs> you know. It's more like getting your eyes off the screen. Yeah, no, get your eyes off the screen. I mean, look what happened to me. This is like six years later. I had 2020. Yeah. Go for a walk. Go exercise. Also, get a dog. Yes. Pretty much. Was there a question at the back? Yes? Uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts about a more synchronous uh, modes of communication, like IRC and Slack? I consider those to be synchronous versus more asynchronous, like email. So what's my opinion between the difference of like which would be better? Is that what you're asking? Or? Uh, how, how it has an effect on, on you as a person working from home. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, they think Slack is the greatest thing ever invented, <laughs> and I can't stand it. Yeah. Um, it's great if I want to get hold of somebody right away, yeah. but if I have to sort through like 80 pages of cat pictures, and then have to learn from Slack, oh, somebody left the company. Yeah, right, okay, so just uh, <laughs> Yeah, okay, just to like uh, reiterate that question, um, what's my opinion between the difference of like synchronous and asynchronous um, modes of communication? So basically like, uh, what is the best form of, like not the best, but what is a good form of communication um, versus like email or like uh, instant chats? Um, to be honest with you, that's a really hard one. I would say now, okay, so I'll give you two different scenarios. Now I'm living in the UK and I'm in an office, my head immediately goes to, hey, contact me on IRC or Slack. Like, email is just such a long form of communication, I just can't do this right now. But honestly, when I was working from home full time in Australia and basically my time zone was completely separate, the best thing was email. Because it meant that that person had sat down, taken the time to write that email, and I got all the information I needed. So I wasn't just being delivered this, like, yeah, 30,000 cat pictures and, this person's dead. So, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like, uh, that was really important and that was a big differentiator. But that doesn't work for everyone, right? So I think that all comes back to, like, how do we separate the channels again? So if you're going to have a Slack channel and you're going to post cat pictures, make that your social channel and make sure you have a work and, like, maybe an important notification channel. So one of the things we actually have is we have our uh, doc team channel and then we have our dev team channel and then we also have, like, a... We actually have a successes channel. So anything, any like individual does something major that perhaps you're not overly like catching up with all the time, you can actually just check on that successes channel and see what cool things our team is doing. That's always a really good way. At first I was like, oh my gosh, this is really quite lame. Um, but then I found out I was actually learning a lot about my colleagues and the work they were doing because we weren't all working on the same thing at the same time. 
So that was quite cool, having a channel that was specifically dedicated to news. Um, that was good news. Probably have the like dead one in a different channel. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we even actually have. Yeah, we actually have an open access test boss too. I don't know. Does anyone use that? Okay, cool. So basically, these guys. Uh, <laughs> it's always these guys. Um, so basically, there is actually an OpenStack um, success bot. If you guys want to look it up, I'm sure you can. But it's pretty much hashtag open. Is this hashtag. Start, is, any, any official OpenStack channel has the OpenStack bot in it. Yeah. Um, just start with pound success, yep. and then your message, and it'll automatically go over to the. Yeah. So then it all gets generated, so that everyone in the community can see what cool stuff you're doing. So like when you know, I know when we released the OpenStack docs for Newton, that was basically like woo. Did a thing, success. When I remember to use the success bot. I know. That was actually kind of exciting. We never use the success bot. <laughs> but um, yeah. Any more questions? Or like, I don't know, pointers? Cool. This is good groovy, guys. Groovy. <laughs> right, awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. And I also really appreciate the conversation we just had. That was really cool. Um, I think I'm ahead of time. No, awesome. Thank you.